of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to St. Andrew's Church, Rickengale, this morning on the last Sunday before Lent, uh, the end of a week that has seen unimaginable changes within Europe. And this morning we will be using various parts of liturgy that has been issued by the Church of England to reflect the trouble situation in the Ukraine. We join together in the words of the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are open, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thoughts and words and deeds, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliverance of God. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Confession for the peace of the world. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city, in our city, town, and nation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated for our reading? second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12 to chapter 4 verse, 4, verse 2. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hard. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there, since only in Christ it is set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, see the glory of the Lord. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides, we refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the helpful statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience above everyone in the sight of God. Here ends the second reading. Our gradual hymn is hymn 82, Christ whose glory fills the skies, 82.
children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions, companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he had said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and opened and they were terrified. Today's Gospel brings us the story of the Transfiguration. Now the Feast of the Transfiguration itself is celebrated in August, so we're really fortunate that this year we get a second chance to think about the Transfiguration and what that can mean for us. I wonder if when we hear this story, probably a very familiar story, we truly appreciate what an awesome event that must have been for Peter, John and James. We're told that Jesus' clothes became dazzling white. I think back to those old television adverts for washing powder or perhaps toothpaste, where the, on the screen the white dazzles you. Is it Colgate where the teeth flash and you've got like a brilliant flash? I can imagine somehow that in this way Jesus' clothes changed, that they became almost blinding in their brilliance. And there's a parallel, of course, between our Gospel reading and the reading from Exodus that we heard of the skin of Moses' face shining because he'd been talking with God to the extent that he needed to wear a veil. Again, I imagine the shining feet really dazzling. And it's Moses' face shining and his veil that we heard again in Paul's second letter. When I was reading these three passages at the beginning of the week and preparing today's service and thinking about my sermon, they all said the same thing. They all Church of England has generally been, no, not really. In many ways, I think the Church has established a thing that people will simply come to of who we are. Nothing in recent times and in modern society has proved to me that this is not the case. And I think we are at, or close to, a tipping point, the point at which either as a church we do start to shine, we do start to make ourselves visible, so that people can't ignore us. Never been 
seen it before. And the church locally, nationally and internationally is in a position that it's never been in before. My plan for my sermon was then I was going to go on, as you probably might have guessed, to talk about resourcing sustainable church. But then came the events in the Ukraine. Not only is the church in a position it's never been in before. Christ described in John's Revelation. Now, without going into the details of the politics, but speaking out. He's in a situation, he's talking into a situation, he's living in a situation where people are fleeing for their lives where people are being killed, where people are being dispossessed. There's a historic parallel here with the people of Israel. And he, as a member of the church, is called to stand, to shine out, to be different, to be unignorable. Now we don't have the power ourselves to influence directly the events that are going on in the world. But later this morning, later on in this uh, article I was listening to with the Orthodox Church, Stephen Cottrell, the Archbishop of York, was talking and the interviewer said to him, so what difference can the church make? Well, Stephen Cottrell said, we can pray because prayer makes a difference. The interviewer was a, a little cynical and pushed him on this. And Stephen Cottrell said, in those around us, but we can only do that in the strength of prayer. Now this is not easy, it's scary, and the result may not be as we would wish it to be. But if that's the case, if we do find this whole situation scary, we're in good company. Because at the Transfiguration, Peter, James and John were terrified, we were told. And after their time of following Jesus, the end result was Jesus was crucified. This was probably not what they had been hoping for, or praying for, or expecting. But in the long game, that gave the opportunity for the resurrection and for all that followed from it. So no matter how scary the future may look for us, if we have faith, there is still hope. We may feel impotent, but if we pray, we can make a difference because prayer changes us, prayer changes those around us, and therefore we can change the world. But if we return to Paul's letter to the not only to not hide our shyness, he tells us that by, it's by God's mercy that we are in ministry and that we should not. to live boldly be the people that the world cannot ignore 
And if we do that, then maybe, just maybe, the changes that we are facing under Resourcing Sustainable Church, under the changes that are going on in the So I invite you to stand as we prepare to share Christ. Jesus says, Peace I lead with you, my peace I give you. Do not let me pass by 
in mercy and not in judgment draw us from hatred to love make the frailty of our praise a dwelling place for your glory Amen The Lord be with you and also with you. lift up your hearts we let us give thanks to the Lord our God Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all good things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, among he put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And therefore, all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Oh, oh. 
according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. He took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, Lord. And so, Father, calling to his death on the cross, his sacrifice one of the sins of the whole world. Our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Andrew, St John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be here. We pray together, most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. blood of Christ was shed for all. Amen.
let us pray. God our Father, your Son is our peace, and his cross the sign of reconciliation. Help us who share the broken bread to bring together what is scattered and to bind up what is wounded, that Christ may bring in the everlasting kingdom of his peace, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. We pray together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just before we stand to receive God's blessing, just a couple of notices this week. Uh, Tuesday is our coffee morning here at uh, 10 o'clock, and Wednesday is Ash Wednesday as we move into the season of Lent. Uh, and the Ash Wednesday Eucharist will be at 6 o'clock at Hackenby Church, where there will be the uh, opportunity for the imposition of ashes for those who wish. So if you're able, would you please stand as we prepare to receive God's blessing. The Lord be with you. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us, and to all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And our final hymn this, evening, this, this morning is hymn 317. Lord, the light of your love is shed.
love and serve the Lord. In the name of God.